Welcome to Paranormal Pages. Please drop a like or comment if you want to help the channel. Now let's get into the true scary stories. The journal that watched. It started on a quiet Tuesday afternoon, one of those days when the world seems to stand still. I had been cleaning the attic, something I'd been putting off for months. The air was thick with dust, and the fading sunlight that filtered through the narrow window cast eerie shadows across the room. I was nearly done when my foot caught on something heavy. I glanced down to see an old, weathered chest, something I hadn't noticed before, buried beneath old quilts and forgotten holiday decorations. It didn't belong to me. Curiosity got the better of me, and I pried the chest open. Inside was an assortment of trinkets, a broken pocket watch, a rusted locket, and an old journal. The cover was cracked leather, the pages yellowed with time. It seemed fragile, ancient, as if it would disintegrate at the slightest touch. What drew me in wasn't the journal's age, but the name engraved on the inside cover in beautiful, ornate script, my name. I flipped the journal open. The first entry was dated October 5, 1924, exactly 100 years ago to the day. The handwriting was neat, precise, yet strangely familiar. I began reading. Today, I had the usual breakfast at the little cafe near the train station. The weather was crisp, and the walk back home was pleasant enough. The attic needs cleaning soon, but the thought of all that dust is unbearable. I froze. It was a description of my day. That very morning, I had gone to the cafe by the station, ordered my usual, and even remarked to myself that I'd clean the attic later. But how? My mind raced, trying to grasp the impossibility of what I was reading. The next page felt heavier as I turned it. I spent the afternoon in the attic, finding an old chest I hadn't seen before. Inside was a journal. My name was written in it. My heart pounded. This journal, it was documenting my life, as if it knew my every move. The more I read, the more disoriented I became. How could someone from 1924 describe my exact actions today, down to the smallest details? I glanced around the attic, suddenly feeling washed. The dusty air seemed heavier, oppressive. I closed the journal and stood, hands trembling. Maybe it was just some bizarre coincidence. Maybe it was a prank, an elaborate one, though I couldn't figure out how anyone could know this much about me. I shook off the creeping unease and stuffed the journal into my back pocket. That night, I couldn't sleep. Every creak in the house made my skin crawl. I lay in bed, eyes fixed on the shadows creeping across the ceiling. The journal was still on the nightstand, taunting me, daring me to open it again. I finally gave in, flipping through the pages with shaking hands. Each entry matched my life exactly, day after day, even mundane details I thought only I knew. But then, I noticed something, the last entry wasn't today. It was tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will hear a knock at the door, but I won't be expecting anyone. I'll be alone, but I'll answer it anyway. I slammed the journal shut and threw it across the room. It hit the wall with a thud, but the fear still lingered. My pulse raced. What would happen tomorrow? Should I ignore the journal's warning, or was it already too late? Morning came, but the tension from the night before lingered, clinging to me like a fog I couldn't shake. I sat in the kitchen, coffee in hand, staring at the journal now resting on the table in front of me. It felt like a ticking bomb, a thing of power I didn't understand, and yet, I couldn't tear myself away from it. My mind raced, replaying the entry over and over, tomorrow, I will hear a knock at the door. The silence in the house felt louder than usual. Every passing minute heightened my sense of dread. I tried to convince myself it was all just a coincidence, some twisted hoax. But when noon came, and my doorbell rang, I nearly jumped out of my skin. I wasn't expecting anyone. My heart pounded in my chest as I slowly rose from the table. The hallway to the front door felt longer than usual, like some infinite stretch of space designed to unnerve me. My feet dragged as though they knew something I didn't, something my mind refused to accept. I reached the door and hesitated, my hand trembling as I gripped the doorknob. I couldn't breathe, the journal's words pounding in my head, I'll be alone, but I'll answer it anyway. I opened the door. There was no one there. The street outside was deserted, the usual hum of the neighborhood oddly absent. I stepped onto the porch, scanning the road, the sidewalks, nothing. Only an eerie stillness that made my skin crawl. And then I saw it. 
A small package sat neatly on the welcome mat. It wasn't there when I'd first opened the door. How had I missed it? I reached down, my fingers brushing the coarse paper wrapping, feeling the strange chill emanating from it. No address. No markings. Just my name, scrawled in the same familiar handwriting from the journal. My breath hitched in my throat as I picked it up and brought it inside. The package was cold, far colder than it should have been, as if it had been left out in the dead of winter rather than the mild autumn air. I tore the paper carefully, my hands shaking uncontrollably, and inside was another journal. This one was newer, the pages crisp, the leather smooth. A note was tucked inside the front cover. You're not alone. Not anymore. I dropped the journal, backing away as though it had burned me. My heart raced as my mind fought to make sense of it. Who was doing this? How did they know? Panic welled up inside me as I bolted the door, double-checked the locks, and retreated to the safety of the living room. But safety was an illusion, a false comfort that had long since left my home. That evening, I tried to distract myself, refusing to let the journals dictate my actions. I told myself it was all a joke, a cruel one, but a joke nonetheless. By the time night fell, I almost believed it, until the knocking started again. Three slow, deliberate taps at the front door. I froze, the blood draining from my face. My body refused to move, my muscles locked in place. The journal had mentioned one knock. Just one. But this was different, wrong. The house creaked in response, the walls themselves seeming to breathe. The air grew colder, heavier, as though the room were closing in around me. Another knock, louder this time, echoed through the house. And then, a voice. A whisper, faint but unmistakable, seeping through the cracks in the walls. Let me in. My breath hitched as I sat frozen in the middle of the living room, the chilling whisper hanging in the air. I strained to hear, hoping it was just my imagination, some trick my panicked mind was playing on me. But the voice came again, soft, insistent. Let me in. This time, I scrambled to my feet, every instinct screaming at me to run, to get away from the door. I backed toward the hallway, my heart pounding so violently I thought it might burst. The wall seemed to close in, shadows twisting in the corners of the room like they were alive, watching, waiting. The journal's words echoed in my head, louder now, mocking me, you're not alone. Not anymore. I grabbed my phone, desperately dialing for help. But as I stared at the screen, the numbers blurred, the signal bar flickering out of existence. No service. Of course. The air seemed to grow colder with each passing second, a creeping chill that numbed my fingers and clouded my thoughts. I backed up against the wall, as far away from the door as I could get, my eyes fixed on it, waiting for the next knock. But it never came. Instead, the door creaked open on its own, just a sliver, as if something, or someone, had gently pushed it from the other side. A slow, deliberate motion. My blood ran cold. There was no one standing there. But the darkness beyond the door was deeper than it should have been, like a void, an emptiness that shouldn't exist. I stared at it, paralyzed by fear, every part of me screaming to run, but my legs wouldn't move. And then, I heard the whisper again, not from the door this time, but from right behind me. You should have left it alone. I whipped around, but the room was empty, at least, it seemed to be. Shadows danced along the walls, stretching into impossible shapes, bending and twisting in ways that made my stomach turn. I stumbled back, tripping over the edge of the couch, and fell to the floor. My eyes darted around the room, searching for something, anything that made sense, but nothing did. And then, slowly, I realized, the journal. It was still lying on the table, open to a page I hadn't read yet. With shaking hands, I crawled toward it, desperate for some kind of answer, some clue as to what was happening. As I reached for it, my fingers brushed the paper, and a searing pain shot through my hand. I pulled back, staring at my palm, now marked with a symbol. A circle, etched deep into my skin, glowing faintly. The journal had changed. The words had shifted, the handwriting becoming jagged, frantic. The new entry was brief, but it sent a wave of terror crashing over me. It's in the house. I recoiled, scrambling to my feet as the whisper returned, louder this time, 
clearer. It was no longer a soft, distant plea. It was a command, and it filled the room, pressing down on me from every direction. Look at me. I didn't want to. Every fiber of my being screamed not to turn around, not to look, but I couldn't stop myself. My head moved on its own, like something had taken control of my body. And there, in the corner of the room, where the shadows were darkest, it stood. A figure, its form barely human, shrouded in darkness. Its eyes, hollow, gleaming, locked onto mine, and the world seemed to tilt beneath me. It smiled, a twisted, unnatural thing, lips curling in a way that no human face could. The shadows around it pulsed, as if they were alive, as if they were part of it, feeding off the fear that filled the room. You let me in, it whispered, its voice no longer soft but a guttural hiss. Now, you're mine. The room spun, the walls closing in, the figure advancing toward me with slow, deliberate steps. My vision blurred, the edges of my consciousness fraying as a cold, unbearable darkness swallowed me whole. And then, everything went black. Hey! Subscribe for more true scary stories. Story 2. The Hollow Ones. It all started with the coin. I wasn't supposed to find it, hell, I wasn't supposed to be in that part of town at all. The old marketplace on the outskirts had long been abandoned, but curiosity got the better of me. The overgrown stalls, rotting wooden beams, and dust-covered relics that scattered the place gave it an air of desolation, a forgotten time. I'd been searching for something, anything, that might be of value to flip at the pawn shop. Instead, I found the coin. Its dull metallic gleam caught my eye as I sifted through a pile of rusted junk, half buried beneath debris. It was heavier than it looked, ancient, and covered in cryptic symbols I couldn't recognize. I should have left it where I found it. But there was something about the weight of it in my hand, like holding a piece of history. It hummed, faintly, barely a vibration, but enough to make me think it was special. That night, back in my cramped apartment, I stared at it for hours. It wasn't the money I needed, but my mind wandered to other things I wished for. A better life, maybe. To be noticed. To have something more than the dull, repetitive existence that had kept me in a constant state of anxiety and dread. That's when I remembered the words the old vendor muttered as I left the marketplace, something about wishes, and beware the price. I hadn't taken him seriously. He was just another vagrant selling dreams. Or so I thought. I didn't plan on testing it. It just slipped out, an idle thought, more than anything. I wish for, a chance to be important, I whispered, the coin rolling between my fingers. The words felt ridiculous as soon as I said them, and I tossed the coin onto the coffee table, sighing at my own desperation. That's when the lights flickered. At first, I assumed it was just another power surge. My building was old and falling apart, and strange flickers weren't uncommon. But then the flickering became erratic, as though the electricity itself was gasping for breath. My stomach twisted, and before I could process what was happening, the lights went out completely. I sat in the darkness, heart pounding, listening to the eerie silence. And then, from the far corner of my living room, I heard it, a faint whisper. Important. My breath caught in my throat. The sound was soft, barely audible, but it sent a chill crawling down my spine. I strained my ears, telling myself it was just the wind outside, a trick of the mind. But then it came again, louder this time, closer. You, are, important. I bolted upright, my pulse hammering in my ears. The whisper was too clear now to be dismissed. Panic gripped me, and I stumbled toward the door, but before I could reach it, the coin rolled off the table and hit the floor with a metallic clink. I froze, staring at it as it spun and slow deliberate circles. The whispering stopped, but something else began. A scraping sound, like fingernails on wood, echoed from the walls. I tried to leave, but the door wouldn't budge. No matter how hard I yanked, it stayed shut, as if the apartment itself had locked me in. Then, without warning, the lights flashed back on. Standing in the corner, where the whisper had come from, was a figure, thin, elongated, with eyes that gleamed like shards of glass. Its body was pale, almost translucent, as if it were made from the same darkness that had filled the room. And it was smiling. I stumbled backward, my throat dry, unable to scream. 
the figure took a step forward, and with every movement, the room seemed to grow colder. I could feel it, a deep, bone-chilling cold that crept into my chest, squeezing the breath out of me. You, are, important, it whispered again, though its lips didn't move. I clutched the coin, my fingers trembling. This wasn't a dream. This wasn't some nightmare I could wake up from. The coin, it was responsible. I had wished for something, and now this thing had come to answer. But it wasn't granting my wish. It was twisting it. The figure stood at the edge of the room, unmoving, its smile still fixed and eyes gleaming like polished stones. I couldn't breathe. My legs felt like jelly, barely able to keep me standing. I glanced down at the coin in my hand, now warm, almost burning to the touch. Somehow, deep down, I knew that the coin was the key to this nightmare. The thing standing in my living room was here because of it. I finally managed to force the words out, though my voice was barely a whisper. What? Are you? The figure didn't respond with words. Instead, it began to move, slow and deliberate, its body twisting unnaturally, its arms too long, its head tilted at an impossible angle. It glided, almost floating, closer to me. My body screamed to move, but I was frozen, my back pressed against the door that wouldn't open. It reached out a hand, thin, skeletal fingers that seemed to stretch as they neared my face. I gave you what you asked for, it said, its voice no longer a whisper but a low, grating sound that made my stomach churn. You are important now. I stumbled to the side, crashing into the wall, knocking over a lamp. This isn't what I wanted. I shouted, clutching the coin so tightly my knuckles turned white. But you wished for it, the figure hissed. Its face contorted, the smile widening unnaturally, like it was peeling the skin off its own skull. You didn't ask for fame, or love, or wealth. You wished to be important. And now, you are the most important thing in this room. To me. A shudder rippled through me as I realized what it meant. It had taken my wish and twisted it. I wanted to be seen, to have significance in the world. But this. This creature had interpreted it as something far more sinister. I was important only because it had chosen me as its target, its victim. I shoved past the thing, my heart racing, and made a desperate run for the window. But before I could reach it, the room seemed to bend. The wall stretched, the floor tilted, and the window, the only escape, moved further away, distorting like a nightmare that wouldn't end. I fell to the floor, my head spinning, the shadows around me closing in. The creature loomed over me. Its eyes gleamed with something close to hunger. The coin has power. But every wish you make will bring a nightmare in return. This is the price you pay. I shook my head, gripping the coin in my trembling hand. No, I gasped. I never wanted this. Take it back. I don't want it. The creature chuckled, the sound like dry leaves rustling in the wind. It's too late. The wish was made, and the coin always gets its due. But you can make another wish. Maybe. It will fix things. Maybe. It will make things worse. The way it said those last words made my blood turn cold. Desperation clawed at me. My mind raced, trying to find a way out. Another wish? But what if it brought something worse? something even more terrifying? I couldn't bear the thought. But there was no other option. I had to try. With shaking hands, I lifted the coin and whispered, I wish. For you to leave. The coin grew hot in my hand, searing my skin. The creature's grin twisted further, its long fingers curling in delight. Granted, it whispered, and then, just like that, the thing vanished. The air in the room shifted the oppressive cold lifting slightly. I was alone again. The lights flickered back on, and I collapsed against the wall, gasping for breath. I had done it. I had made it leave. But the relief was short-lived. The coin lay on the floor, its surface now shimmering with a strange, sickly glow. And then I heard it, a knock. Soft at first, but insistent. From the other side of the door. My pulse quickened. I stood up staring at the door in disbelief. It couldn't be. The creature was gone. Wasn't it? The knock came again, louder this time. With a trembling hand, I reached for the doorknob. 
As I turned it, the door swung open, revealing nothing but the empty hallway. But that's when I noticed the smell, a pungent, rotting stench that filled the air. And then I saw it. Standing at the end of the hall, barely visible in the dim light, was another figure. Taller, broader, with glowing red eyes, and this time, its voice wasn't a whisper. You made another wish. The figure at the end of the hallway wasn't like the first. This one was larger, hulking, with skin that seemed to ripple like shadows and blood-red eyes that glowed unnaturally in the dim light. Its body was obscured by the dark, but I could hear it moving, heavy, deliberate steps, like each footfall echoed through the building. My heart thundered in my chest. I had made another wish. And now, another nightmare had come to answer. I slammed the door shut, locking it in a panic, though I knew it wouldn't keep whatever that thing was from getting in. The stench of rot clung to the air, stronger now, choking me. My apartment felt smaller by the second, the walls closing in around me, as if the room itself were suffocating. I didn't ask for this. I screamed at the coin, still clutched tightly in my hand. I wished for you to leave, not for something else to come. The air grew thick, humming with an unnatural energy. The door rattled violently, as if something on the other side was trying to break through. The creature pounded, each thud more forceful than the last, and I knew the door wouldn't hold for long. And then, like a whispered promise, I heard it again, the voice of the first creature, faint but distinct. The wishes. Bring balance. You wished for freedom, and now you face. Something far worse. The realization hit me like ice water. Every wish twisted into something darker, something cruel. It wasn't just a matter of words, it was the intent. The coin seemed to feed on fear, on desire, warping reality to its liking. I thought I could control it, that I could outsmart whatever dark magic it held, but I was wrong. Horribly wrong. The door burst open, with splintering, and the creature from the hallway stepped into the room. Its eyes locked onto me, gleaming with a predatory hunger. It was taller than I imagined, its head nearly scraping the ceiling, its limbs long and gangly, like a grotesque caricature of something human. It spoke, but its voice was no more than a deep, guttural rasp. You wished. And I. Am your answer. I backed up, tripping over the coffee table and crashing to the floor. My mind raced, searching for any possible escape. The windows, the walls, they all seemed so distant now, distorted, unreachable. But the coin. I still had the coin. I could make another wish, one that could stop this nightmare. I, my voice trembled as the creature moved closer, its face twisted in a sickening grin. I wished for it to all go away, I blurted, hoping beyond hope that this time the coin wouldn't twist my words. The room seemed to vibrate, the very air trembling as if reality itself was shaking in protest. The coin glowed hot, searing my palm, and for a moment, everything went silent. The creature paused, its grin fading, eyes narrowing. The smell of rot lifted, and for the briefest of moments, I thought I had done it. I thought I had won. But then, with a sudden snap, the creature let out a deafening roar, one that rattled my skull. The walls around me seemed to bend, and the ceiling darkened, as if something far worse than I had imagined was crawling through the cracks of my existence. The creature's form shifted, its skin bubbling, bones cracking unnaturally as it grew larger, more grotesque with each passing second. You wished for it to go away, the creature growled, its voice now a chorus of tortured screams. And now, everything will. The ground beneath me began to crumble. My apartment, the familiar setting of my mundane life, started to disintegrate into dust. The furniture collapsed into itself, the walls peeled away, and the ceiling twisted into a black, gaping void. It was like reality itself was being torn apart by the wish. I scrambled to my feet, heart pounding, as the creature laughed its grotesque form now towering above me, its shadow consuming the room. Everything was vanishing, being swallowed by the nothingness the wish had created. The coin was still in my hand, glowing hotter and hotter, as if it were feeding off the destruction. I could feel its heat spreading, burning up my arm, searing through my veins. The creature loomed closer, its eyes burning with the same malevolent hunger, and I knew, I knew, that there was no escape from this. Not unless I made another wish but I had nothing left. No words, no clever tricks. 
The world around me was unraveling, and so was I. As the floor beneath me crumbled into darkness, I did the only thing I could think of. I clenched the coin in my hand, feeling it scorch my skin, and whispered the final words. I wish. I had never found this coin. The world froze for a fraction of a second, the air still and heavy. And then, everything went black. I woke up with a start, drenched in sweat, my body trembling. For a moment, I wasn't sure where I was. My heart pounded against my ribcage as my eyes adjusted to the dim light filtering through the window. The room was familiar, too familiar. I was back in my apartment. The worn couch, the small kitchen, the creaky wooden floors. Everything was just as it had been before the coin, before the creatures, before the nightmare. But something felt wrong. I sat up slowly, every muscle in my body aching as if I had been pulled through hell itself. My mind was spinning. I remembered everything, the wishes, the creatures, the terror of watching my world unravel piece by piece. But none of it should have been real. Yet here I was, alive, breathing. My hand shot to my pocket, heart stopping as I felt the cold, familiar weight. The coin. It was still there. I yanked it out, staring at it in disbelief. It was just as it had been before, its cryptic symbols glinting under the faint light. My stomach twisted. I had wished it all away. I had wished that I had never found this cursed thing. So why was it still here? Why was I still here? A cold dread settled over me, and my mind raced. Maybe this was some kind of trick, some illusion. But no matter how much I tried to convince myself, the truth gnawed at the edges of my sanity. The coin wasn't done with me. I stood up, my legs shaky, and paced the room. I had to get rid of it, throw it out, destroy it, anything. But then I remembered the vendor's words, etched into my memory, beware the price. The coin wasn't something I could just walk away from. It was bound to me now, like a curse. My phone buzzed, snapping me out of my thoughts. The screen lit up with a text message from my friend Aaron, haven't heard from you in days. Everything alright? Days? I hadn't realized how much time had passed. My mind had been consumed by the coin and the horrors it unleashed. I glanced at the coin again, anger and fear battling in my chest. This thing had ruined my life. It had twisted every wish I'd made into a waking nightmare. But maybe, just maybe, I could outsmart it this time. Maybe there was a way to make one final wish, a wish that couldn't be twisted, that would end this once and for all. My thoughts were interrupted by a knock at the door. My heart lurched. The last time there was a knock, a nightmare followed. I stared at the door, frozen in place, my breath shallow. But this time, the knock was softer, familiar. It's Aaron, a voice called. You home? I exhaled in relief, quickly unlocking the door. Aaron stepped inside, frowning as he looked me over. Man, you look like hell. What happened? I didn't know where to begin. How could I explain the nightmare I'd lived through, the creatures, the coin? I opened my mouth to speak, but then I stopped. Aaron's eyes weren't on me, they were on the coin in my hand. Where did you get that? He asked, his voice low, curious. My blood ran cold. You see it? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Aaron nodded, stepping closer, eyes fixed on the coin as if drawn to it. He reached out, fingers trembling. Don't touch it. I snapped, yanking it away. He froze, blinking as if he'd just woken up from a dream. Sorry. I don't know what came over me, he muttered rubbing his eyes. The coin's power. It wasn't just affecting me, it was spreading. That's when I knew. This thing would never stop, never rest. It would keep twisting wishes, keep destroying lives, as long as it existed. I had to make one last wish, but it had to be worded perfectly. No loopholes, no misinterpretations. This was my final chance. Aaron sat on the couch, watching me warily. What's going on with you, man? You're freaking me out. I ignored him, clutching the coin tightly in my hand. My mind raced, trying to find the right words. The coin couldn't be destroyed, I knew that much. But maybe, just maybe I could wish it into a place where it could do no harm. I wish. 
I began, my voice shaking. I took a deep breath, focusing. I wish for the coin to be sealed away in a place where it can never be found by anyone. Ever. The coin glowed in my hand, hot and bright, and I felt a surge of energy shoot through me. For a moment, the room around me seemed to ripple, like reality itself was bending. Then, just as quickly, the coin disappeared, vanishing from my palm in a flash of light. It was gone. I let out a shaky breath, collapsing onto the floor. It was over. The coin was sealed away, lost to time, never to be found again. I had one. Aaron stared at me, wide-eyed. What the hell just happened? I smiled weakly. It's over, I whispered. The nightmare's over. But as I spoke, a cold gust of wind blew through the room. The lights flickered, and a shiver ran down my spine. And then, from the darkest corner of the room, I heard it, a faint, familiar whisper. Another wish. Has been granted. Hey. Subscribe for more true scary stories. Story 3. The Pulse in the Doll. When the doll arrived, I never suspected anything strange about it. It was a gift from my grandmother, wrapped in old tissue paper and tucked inside a cracked wooden box. The doll's porcelain face was chipped at the edges, and its dress, a once lavish velvet gown, was now tattered with time. But it wasn't the cracks in the face or the disheveled clothing that unnerved me. It was the eyes. Pale glass eyes that seemed too large for the doll's small frame, gleaming in a way that didn't belong to something so old. I set it on the mantel, trying not to think too much about it, but the unease lingered. That night, as I lay in bed, a subtle noise broke the silence. A faint, rhythmic sound. Thump. Thump. At first, I thought it was my own pulse echoing in my ears. But when I held my breath, the sound continued, coming from the direction of the mantel. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end. I shook it off, telling myself it was nothing, just the old house settling. But the next night, the sound returned, louder, closer. I got out of bed and crept toward the mantel, my heart racing with each step. The doll sat there, unmoved, untouched. I bent down, placing my ear near its chest, half laughing at the absurdity of the situation. That's when I heard it. The unmistakable thud of a heartbeat. I stumbled back, a wave of nausea hitting me as I stared at the doll. This couldn't be happening. Dolls don't have heartbeats. I tried to convince myself that it was just a trick of my imagination, but the sound was too real, too vivid to dismiss. It wasn't just the heartbeat that unnerved me, it was the way it seemed to grow louder as if the doll were somehow waking up. I grabbed the doll and shoved it back into its wooden box, locking it in the closet. Out of sight, out of mind, I thought. But the sound followed me. That heartbeat. It echoed in my ears, becoming almost deafening as I lay in bed, trying desperately to sleep. I told myself I would return it to my grandmother in the morning, tell her I didn't want it. But something stopped me. She wouldn't take it back, I whispered to myself in the dark. She knew. The next day, I called my grandmother. My hand trembled as I held the phone to my ear, waiting for her voice. When she answered, I struggled to find the right words. Grandma, I began, my voice shaking, the doll you gave me. It's. I know, she interrupted, her voice disturbingly calm. You heard it, didn't you? I froze. Heard what? I asked, but I already knew what she meant. The heartbeat. There was a long pause on the other end, the silence between us suffocating. It has been in our family for generations, she said finally, her voice low, as if afraid of being overheard. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to something else. A cold shiver ran down my spine. What are you talking about? I demanded my voice rising. What is this thing? But she didn't answer my question. Instead, she said something even more terrifying. Don't let it out of the box again. Whatever you do, keep it locked away. Then she hung up, leaving me alone with a dial tone and a deepening sense of dread. I slammed the phone down and rushed to the closet. My pulse pounded in my ears, almost matching the relentless thumping of the doll's heartbeat, which I could now hear even through the wooden box. I reached for the doorknob, but something stopped me, a sound, like a faint whisper, coming from inside the closet. 
My hand froze on the knob as I leaned in, pressing my ear to the door. The whisper was soft, almost too quiet to make out, but the words were unmistakable. Let me out. I stumbled backward, nearly tripping over my feet. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This had to be some kind of nightmare. Dolls don't talk. Dolls don't have heartbeats. And yet, this one did. In a panic, I ran downstairs, desperate to get away from the sound, from the whispers. I sat on the couch, staring at the floor, trying to calm my racing mind. But the house felt wrong, heavy, as if the air itself had thickened. I could feel it watching me. By nightfall, the whispers had grown louder, more insistent. They filled the house, echoing through the walls, seeping into my thoughts. Let me out. I pressed my hands to my ears trying to block it out, but the voice wouldn't stop. It was in my head now, entwined with the pounding heartbeat that seemed to vibrate through my bones. I knew what I had to do. I had to get rid of it. Burn it, bury it, anything to stop the noise. But as I stood in front of the closet, my hands shaking, I couldn't bring myself to open the door. Then, through the pounding of the doll's heartbeat, I heard my own voice whisper, let me out. I jerked away from the closet door, my breath catching in my throat. That voice, it wasn't just in my head anymore. It came from me. I stumbled back, trying to shake off the growing dread creeping up my spine. The doll had wormed its way into my mind, and I could feel its presence, stronger than before, like a shadow that stretched across my thoughts. Desperate, I raced to the fireplace, yanking the poker from its stand. My hands trembled as I held it in front of me like a weapon. I didn't know what I was preparing for, what could happen if I opened the door, but I knew I had to do something. It wasn't just the heartbeat now. The walls felt alive, pulsing in rhythm with that infernal sound. When I finally gathered the courage to wrench the closet door open, the box was there, just as I had left it. But the wooden lid was slightly ajar, and the sound of the heartbeat was deafening. My fingers hovered over the edge of the box, my mind screaming at me to stop. But something pulled me forward, some terrible compulsion I couldn't explain. I lifted the lid. The doll sat motionless inside, its glassy eyes staring blankly ahead. The heartbeat, though, it was so loud now, vibrating through the air, as if coming from deep within the doll's chest. Then I saw it. The tiny porcelain ribs beneath its gown were shifting, ever so slightly, with each thud. I wanted to scream, to smash it into pieces, but my body betrayed me. I couldn't move. And then, it spoke. You can't run from me, it whispered, its voice soft and childlike, but filled with malice. We're connected now. My stomach lurched as I watched the doll slowly turn its head to face me. Its mouth didn't move, but the voice filled the room, as if coming from the walls themselves. You opened the box, it said, and now I'm inside you. I staggered back, choking on the fear rising in my throat. I could feel it, the connection it was talking about. The heartbeat wasn't just in the doll anymore. It was in me, too, pounding in my chest in perfect unison with the infernal pulse of the doll. I collapsed onto the floor, clutching my chest as the sound consumed me. There had to be a way out. I couldn't let this thing take over. My grandmother's words echoed in my mind, don't let it out of the box again. But it was too late. I had unleashed something I couldn't control, and now it was clawing its way deeper into my soul. With the last shred of strength I had left, I grabbed the poker and smashed it into the doll. The porcelain shattered, pieces flying across the room. For a brief moment, the heartbeat stopped, and I gasped in relief. But then, from the shards of broken porcelain, I heard it again, stronger than before. Now you've really made me angry. The room fell into an eerie silence. I stood frozen staring at the broken shards of porcelain scattered across the floor. The doll was in pieces, and yet, I could still feel it. The heartbeat. Stronger now, pulsing through the air, through my chest, through every inch of my body. I could barely think over the pounding in my head. I backed away slowly, my hands shaking, but there was nowhere to run. It was inside me. The whispers returned, louder, angrier. You shouldn't have done that. The voice hissed, its tone no longer playful. It was furious, venomous. I looked at the shattered remains of the doll, but the sound wasn't coming from there anymore. 
It was coming from the walls, from the very air around me. I turned to run, but I could feel it dragging me back. My own body was betraying me, pulling me closer to the pile of broken porcelain. Stop! I screamed, trying to claw my way toward the door, but my legs wouldn't obey. With each passing second, the heartbeat grew stronger, until it felt like my chest would explode. My skin tingled, my heart racing in perfect sync with the relentless thudding. And then I felt it, a pressure, deep inside my chest, as if something was moving, growing. I stumbled toward the mirror, my vision blurring, barely able to see through the dim light of the room. My reflection stared back at me, pale, trembling, eyes wide with terror. I placed my hand over my chest, and that's when I felt it, something alive, something not me. My skin bulged, rippling under my touch, as if something inside was pushing to get out. My heart pounded, matching the doll's rhythm, and the realization hit me like a wave of cold terror. The doll's heartbeat, it wasn't separate anymore. It was my heartbeat. It had become mine. I screamed, clawing at my chest, desperate to tear whatever it was out of me, but it was too late. The whispers filled the room, now shouting, commanding. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. The pressure built, unbearable, until with a sickening crack, something broke inside me. My chest split open, but instead of blood, there was porcelain, sharp, jagged, white porcelain. I fell to the floor, gasping for breath, feeling the cold pieces push through my skin. My fingers clawed at the floor, leaving streaks of blood as the doll's body reformed from within me. It stood over me now, whole again gleaming in the dim light. Its face was no longer cracked, its dress no longer tattered. The heartbeat was steady, its rhythm now matching the eerie stillness of the room. The doll tilted its head, those glassy eyes locking onto mine. You're mine now, it whispered, and this time, it smiled. I tried to scream, but no sound came. I could feel myself fading, my body no longer my own. The last thing I heard before everything went black was the doll's heartbeat stronger than ever, as it began to beat in my chest. Thumb. 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 The end. Subscribe for more true scary stories. Thanks for watching.